Welcome to Sister Wives, Season 18, Episode 13, The Elephant in the Room. Cody wears gloves. Cody has to wear gloves. Oh, and he is so happy wearing his gloves. We have not seen Cody with this level of joy in, I can't even think of the last time he was this happy as he was wearing gloves, hanging out with his guy friends. Selling off all his estate items to pay his other wives. I don't know. Ah. I, I'm guessing that they like, I don't know. I will get to that. But I wanted to say we're running a little bit late because my little dog Pocket is in surgery right now. Um, Hopefully he, going very well. We'll see how everything goes. His little face swells up like Blew a baseball. Blew up like a balloon. And they gave him antibiotics and it went away. And then he had tooth surgery. And then five months later it happened again. And they were like, okay, if it happens again, we're going to go take him back into surgery. And then it happened again. Woke up. He was a little swollen. We called the vet. Next thing you know. Did you want to? Uh, we, like we turn around and like an hour later it's like four times bigger so we like call back to the vet and we're like it's getting worse and they're like okay bring him in right away gave him medicine but so have some nice calm thoughts for our little dog pocket who is the one who was coughing a few like a few months ago like he's not not doing great he's not in the best and he's not young and spry he is on a little low dose, dose of steroids so he is a little roided out Following us around Cody the house. Monster. He's following us around the house barking for food. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're back in Lehigh. Are we? Uh, looks like Why we're going to do... Why are we back in Lehigh? What are we doing? This is Christine's. Okay. So Chris... Oh, did I say it's called the elephant in the room? Okay, so I'm already just tired of discussing this. I'm sure if you've watched any of our channels, any of my other videos, my short videos, you're probably also just tired of it. Spoiler I get a lot alert, of, McKelty's having twins. McKelty's having twins, and they're being weird about it. Her and Tony are being really weird about it. So I already, this was shown they're in the preview. They're being normal, but it's weird to everybody else. What? <laughs> they're being oh, normal for them. them. But, okay, okay, okay. I thought you meant, like, everybody else is weirded out. And I'm like, no, I don't think anybody else is weirded out by them. But, yeah. So, just me. Just me who's weirded out by them. So, I do sometimes get the allegation of, like, you're picking on McKelty. If you don't want me to talk about McKelty, don't put her on the show. <laughs> because... She's on the show, talk about the show, and her behavior is always a little weird. So when we saw this in the preview, I was like, this feels like production and McKelty being like, we've got to force Christine, um, Christine, Janelle, Cody, and Robin. I'll get to the discussion about Mary, but she is not there. So we're going to ignore her for the moment, just like everybody else does, and discuss those. It felt like she was trying to force everyone into the same room, the right, same Zoom. And then I was like, you know, but there's a ton, because that's how the description said. And what I said was, if this ends up genuinely being like, it's all of Tony's family, it's all of McKelty's family, it's a big party, the grandparents are there, all that, then clearly it's just something normal that you do. Hey, I've got divor divorced parents. I don't want anyone to feel... So um, that's what it was, moving on. No. It was not that. <laughs> not at all. None of Tony's family was there. At least that we saw. Now, maybe they had an off-screen... Um, real life party but they didn't mention that it so it definitely felt like this and then she gave so okay i'll tell you how it went and then there's this long speech at the end which kind of cements my view on what she thought she was doing so it's sort of uh gabe is there uh so truly is there with christine with tony and mckelty it's all we saw of there maybe there were more people off screen uh robin and cody come in aspen was there with Lo, Lo aspen was with logan Janelle was there. Hunter Maddie was there. Isabel was there. Was Mary there? Mary was not there. We'll get to that in a second because they do discuss it. And then they have this, and they're all sort of, everyone, to me, like they were just putting on a brave face. Christine was like, hey, those are her parents as well. They can be there. Janelle's like, it doesn't bother me in the least bit. You know, they're a married couple. Of course, they're going to be there. And then Cody, like, has some, like, well, if it wasn't for all the animosity toward me. And it's just like, shut up, dude. Shut up. Uh, you know, I mean, of course, it's like, at least he's honest, which is that he is a monster. And that he sees everything through his own lens. And it doesn't occur to him that it's just as difficult for everybody else to be there. Um, he doesn't seem to really greet anyone. He doesn't say anything like, hey, it's great to see everyone. I've really loved and missed you. He doesn't say anything. He's doing the classic, like... I won't break first. They have to apologize to me. I'm not going to show any weakness. BS. That that destroys families. Then they have this long... I feel like there's a name for that. Well, Toxic stupidity. 
uh, there was this long interview from Aurora. It looks to be the exact same time that they did the interview a couple of weeks oh, ago. Gosh, where Brianna they really, was they really should leave the kids out of this because they. Well, she's an adult, which is why I'm going to talk about her. And she's an idiot. And well, I'm going to start off by just saying it's deeply, deeply upsetting to me how far like they away had a from gun reality. Pointed at her from off screen. The yeah. way she was. The way I, I, what I said was when we were watching it, which if you would like to see us watch the show live, it's available on Patreon on our ten and twenty five dollar level. We've every episode this season, so all thirteen episodes we've watched on this computer. We it records the show and our initial reactions. It's about twenty minutes longer than the actual episode because we constantly pause it. It's not meant to be a substitute for watching the episode yourself. But if you want to watch it with someone so that when you scream, we are also going, shut up, you're the worst person ever. Boo to Cody or Robin. You can enjoy that on our Patreon. If you join today, you can get all eight, um, all 13 episodes. $10 um, tier or higher. Yeah, $10 tier or higher. Um, just I'm just sharing that. You don't have to do it. We love that you're here watching it on YouTube. If you want to just watch free content. I totally get you. I'm the same way. That's fine. But when we were watching this live last night, I was like, I have seen hostage videos with more excitement and warmth. Like, she looks wrecked. And it makes me sad because she's like, what, what her basic point was that there's no one in this family who has fought harder for this family than Robin. And it's like, I don't know what to tell you. I just don't believe that 20... Like, what, 20 out of 25 people, or however many. There was 13 kids, and one of them really gets along with Cody. Um, there was four wives. Two of them do not get along with Cody. One is Mary, whatever's going on there. I'm hoping that she moves on. And I think, I think when Mary moves on and is really ready to see things objectively, if she's able, that'll be the bombshell of bombshells. But I don't know if she's ever going to get to that point. But like, so it's just basically Cody, Robin, their five kids, and McKelty. Like, that's not good statistics. That's not, I'm not saying that, that groupthink is always right. I'm just saying if 98% of the viewers who have watched footage for years and years and years, this is not like a one 30-minute episode. This was, and there was a lot of stuff. I recently did a video where I asked people times that they have shown their true characters which is like when Janelle, uh, which, like one of my examples when Janelle told Cody to F off. But like when Robin kicked the dog, when Robin told Maddie she'd move out if she didn't agree, when Matt, when he told Maddie that she couldn't have her, um, that she, uh, uh, when Robin commented about the weight of the other wives, when, when Robin could, yeah, comment about how Cody loved them despite their weight and stretch marks and all of that. When she accidentally got Janelle the wrong size shirt that was going to be too small. When she told Janelle that she should... Uh, when she wouldn't let Mary go back to college. Um, because it was going to be inconvenient for her. When she cussed outside of the RV. When she... When Mary said that Cody was difficult to live at. And she... Or she said something about, like, he should be doing more. And she's like, what more can he do? Like, that's the real Robin. They've all had these moments where it sneaks out. And some of it are more... Funny, like, I think Janelle telling, well, when they told, when they sprung it on Janelle and Christine that Cody um, was going to divorce Mary and marry Robin, and Janelle goes, I think this is a really bad thing. I think this is going to show favoritism to Robin, which we were already there. She was understating it. Um, I think that that is, I think that that's true. So... You know, it, but it just makes me sad because the lack of objective, like how disconnected Aurora has to be from reality of what is happening, just makes me think that she is in a terrible place to have any healthy relationships moving forward. And... Yes, with parents like that. Well, it's just a matter of like, if you are that divorced from the reality of what's happening, are you capable <sighs> of interacting with, hu with, so I said humans. With humans. With humans, but I mean, I just, I do, I do feel really bad for her. Um, but then also, this world that that Robin has created is essentially says that everyone hates them. How is that not going to deeply, deeply affect these kids? I mean, it's going to take like ten years to get deprogrammed. You know, yeah. So it's like, I just felt terrible for Aurora, but she was a hundred percent wrong. She is completely. 
I know, now, I'm not saying Robin may be a great Brianna, mom to her. That's her little sister, is that right? Uh, it goes Aurora Brianna. Did she say anything? Not this time. But it was clearly the same Waste interview. That. They just cut that out. But yeah, yeah, no one has done more to support this family. And it's like, yeah, when Robin calls when he was with the other wives, when he insisted he couldn't be away Maybe for more than 24 hours. she means just this family, as in mom and dad and my siblings that are moms. Yeah, I mean, dads. that might be the case. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I. That's a stretch. I'm sort of one of those people. I'm not going to say I'm always objective because we all have blind spots. And if you don't know that you're not objective about certain blind spots, then you're definitely not objective about a lot of blind spots. We might not be objective, but we're perfect. But, thank you, John. Um, but I feel like if I was in a situation, and I have been in a situation where I really like someone, and then you keep encountering people who say the same thing, and they're like a variety of people, and they... Well, I shouldn't say the same thing. They all have problems with this person, but all the problems are different. It's not like they all heard this rumor that she cheated on her husband and it wasn't true. But it's like, well, she she stole my, like if you work, worked with someone that you thought you really liked, but then this person over here says she gave my client, she gave me the wrong number for the client and so I missed meeting with them. And over here they say, she, you know, she sabotaged my paperwork or this person says she gave me the wrong date for the meeting. You start to go... Like, conspiracies fall apart really easily. Like, two people can't have an affair without four, four other people knowing. So the idea that everybody got together, made up their own story, it's just not... And as someone who has gone through this in real life with the person who's always the victim, and, and the, the response is, oh, well, you all are just picking on blank. Um, I'm just going to say I don't buy it. So we get back to it, but Janelle's like, hey, it makes sense. They're going to have two boys. Everyone seems very good about it. And then Cody immediately launches. I mean, not immediately because it's an interview. And like how it's, oh, it's so bittersweet. I'm so paranoid because everyone has so much contempt for me. And it's like, it couldn't possibly be because you're contemptible. It couldn't possibly because you've, you've, it's not even like he did one thing. And this whole, I guess even McKel, so I get a lot of McKelty apologists. I I do not, I have great concern for your judgment if you believe everything she says. But, 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 if you like her and you do her Patreon, that is none of my business. It would be John's business. I know he's just holding back from saying something snarky. Um, but it's none of my business. But it hasn't people, come to me yet. People, people have said that she's starting to wise up in her Patreon. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I can't imagine how brain dead you'd have to be to watch all of these episodes and not start to be like, gosh, she's got a nasty word for everyone, especially after last year's tell-all. But anyway, so he's contemptible, all of that. And then Mary goes into this, well, first of all, C Cody says, I don't really know why Mary's not here. Janelle says, I don't really know why Mary's not here. And then um, Christine is very much like, my kids are adults and they get to choose who in the family they interact with, which basically supports what we've heard from McKelty through her Patreon, which is that, she doesn't like Mary, and so Mary's not invited. I know there's more allegations than that, but I'm not going to get into them because I haven't heard them directly from her. And it just and feels weird. it's not weird. on the show, which we're talking it's about. It's not on the show, and it just also so feels weird. So, McKelty she... said that? No, no, So, Christine said that, and then McKelty goes into this long speech, and this is... She is her father's daughter. Well, this is what I bought... Okay, so when she talks, she has this smug sanctimonious attitude about her that sets my teeth on edge. And I'm trying to think, where does she get this? And I think she gets it from, hold on, follow me, from Christine and, and Robin. And this is what I think, which is, I'm going to explain, Robin goes to her, we know Robin goes to her and says that she's this amazing kid, she's the only one who gets it, she's so good. Cody says that too. Now, Christine also says that. Christine says it on the show and to her face. I think Christine... What Christine is doing is really about letting not... Letting buy into her own hype? Well, letting, letting McKelty have relationships with people. And so she goes out of her way to say, Honey, if you want to have a relationship with, with um, Cody, Cody and Robin, I support you. Of course they're still your parents. I'm never going to make you pick sides. I think she does all that. And I do think, as the parent, in the position she is, as the divorced parent, I do think that is incredibly the right position. I do not think it's 100% accurate. What I mean is, me as someone who is not her mother can absolutely say she is not, she's playing both sides against the middle, et cetera, et cetera. But what I think is, 
she thinks that the viewers will be just as impressed with her as Christine and Robin are about her bridge building. And I do understand, this sounds like I'm throwing Christine under the bus, and I'm really not. What I'm saying is, is a mother of a divorced child, of a child of divorce, she has to really go out of her way not to criticize the father. I am not involved in this, so I can criticize the father. And I can tell you, I'm not saying she can't have a relationship. Do not, in the comments, tell me, oh, you're just mad because she can't have a relationship. Truly has a relationship, and I have never criticized her. Isabel has a relationship. I've never criticized her about that. I don't have a problem with it. What I have a weird thing about is this constant, smug, sanctimonious. Everybody has to reconcile. Everybody's got to reconcile, but not her with Mary. And that's where I have a real issue. If she was to say, everyone needs to reconcile, therefore I'm trying to reconcile with Mary, that would be fine. If she says, I respect that boundaries and that sometimes there's people you don't want to be around as an adult, and that is your choice, and she said, I feel all the same way for my siblings and my parents, they get to choose who they're around, I would also respect that. But instead what she says is, everybody else needs to reconcile, she says, uh, Robin's kids, Janelle's kids, Christine's kids, Mary's kids. Mary's kids really threw me, but then some people commented, Mary also referred to her kids. Because as near as I can tell what she means is Leo, which is what her child now goes by, and Audrey. Uh, Audrey, right? Not Aubrey. I get it confused because I got it wrong once. Audrey. I think she refers to them them as their her children, her kids. But the idea, well, first of all, I'll tell you, Christine and Janelle's kids do not need to reconcile with anyone. In terms of they seem fine with each other. I didn't see Robin's kids on the call. So where's this whole, like, everybody needs to reconcile. Okay, great. Then you know who you need to talk to. And there's the smudgeness. This, this, what, is that from the office too? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Just real, real, the, like the bed bugs. <laughs> <laughs> bed bugs are real smug. Uh, no. The bed bed are smug. I don't know what you're talking about. When they go and um, the, the the temporary office administrator tries to hit on Jim in his, in his bed, and so he gets Dwight oh, and says, yeah, yeah, "I think yeah. there's bed bugs." And he's like, "What do they look like?" It's like, "Oh, they're walking around. Are they smug? Oh, they're real smug." Oh no, this was this was when they got the bad re reviews from their clients. That was and, Kelly. Oh, I, oh, there's the smudgeness. The smudgeness. Okay, so anyway, so she's smug and smug, snug, whatever. Um, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be one of our reviews without a completely unnecessary detour. detour. Uh, so yeah, so that's my issue. Is that I'm not saying she has to. If you have a situation and you feel like I'm coming for you, trust we me. We don't cur. Come well, at no, me. No, no, no. Come at me, bro. I'm not going to get into it, but we a thousand percent understand what it's like to have people that you do not interact with. I mean... That's fine, but then you got to be fair with everyone. So her acting like everybody has to reconcile. We all need each other. And then it's like, fine, then you know who you should sit down with? Your dad, Robin, and their kids, because they're the ones who keep withholding... They were they were the ones who didn't feel safe around the rest of the family, and so I just I just can't with her anymore. And then it's ridiculous. I don't know. I'm not going to get into interview look because I don't want to. Anyway, okay. So then we go back to Mary's carriage house, and I am I want so badly to buy in to this Mary storyline, and they are. I'm going to blame the editors 100% because they have Mary explain again about the carriage house, and I'm like, this is the fourth time. I get it. She's leaving Flagstaff. She's going to the B&B. &B, she's converting the carriage house into a place to sell. You've told us that. We watched the renovation. Do they assume that we all have full-blown amnesia between every episode? I've just reached my limit. And I want so badly to be fair to Mary and to give her a chance at a redemption arc. And they are making me... Like, when they're like, so this is the carriage house. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And then they show that same wide-eyed. So on my anniversary, I'm like, I I could act it out. I, I were, when we watched it, I recited what she was saying. Because I have heard it. I, I must have heard it. played it so many times I already. must have heard it 50 times. I'm absolutely m m losing my mind. So this it's is been now. been for a while, honey. Several months in the future. And then she's like, we have this internal covenant, change is good, you know, do I want to be internally bonded to someone that doesn't want to be? And the answer is no, you don't. Can we get a move on? Because I know 
that last year at the tell-all, she said that they were no longer married. But then she was like, but I'm still open to reconciliation. And then they released a statement on the social media that said they had gone their separate, separate ways. But I just don't trust it. Because the number of times she has said that she wants to move on, and then she's been like, but I want to reconcile. But I'm open to reconciliation. I'm like, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it until we see her say that and not bring up, like, to move on. Now, I'm not saying she has to move faster. Um, she has, I, I'm not saying, I'm just saying they have to stop showing it. If, if we're going to hear the same thing over and over, stop asking her the same question and showing it to us because I'm going to lose my mind. My guess is that they just thought this was this great slow burn to a final whatever we're going to get next week. Okay. Wait, what? Final? Well, the final the final confrontation between Mary and Cody when Rob, when she says she's done. The final countdown. I don't know there's a final episode. A lot of people think that it's going to end on that. I just the timing doesn't quite seem right to me, but I could be wrong. We'll find it. We'll I certainly don't have any inside knowledge. Uh, beyond you. So then we go back to self film, and if you had any doubt if it was self film, they put the two cameras, which were iPhones, facing each other. So in the middle of every shot, you can see the tripod with the, the with the iPhone on it. It's like really the sound quality is terrible, and Tony is right next to Christine and spends almost. So Isabel well, is going. Well, at least the banter is fun, right? I know. So Isabel is going back to North Carolina. Her summer is done. Christine said how nice it was to have her home, that to have like a real home to get settled so she feels like she has some place to go back to, all of that. Um, and uh, and then Tony just gets up and Christine. They showed this as well in the sneak peek. And I just feel like there's this need to be the center of every every scene. And it and it's just, you know, so she, they're kind of harassing her about dating. And I just feel like going, just let her be. And that's all. That's that that was the whole about. thing. That's the whole thing. Oh, you should use a fake name, which is not a bad idea. And she's like, I don't feel comfortable. And then it's so scary. And I, you know. And then Janelle says the same thing about she doesn't want to swipe. And um, what in the world, Janelle? Janelle said that Christine and Robin are really ooper up in the kids. Oh, Janelle and Chris. Uh, Janelle and Rob. Okay. Okay, I know what this is. <laughs> I don't know what planet she's on. <laughs> so what they do is they do the segue. And what um, what Janelle says is, Cody and Robin are really wrapped up in their own kids. Mary's at the B&B &B and my kids are good. So Christine and I decided to go on a road trip. And I was like, what are you talking about? It doesn't, Mary could be on the moon. And this does not affect Chanel. She hasn't seen her in a year. It doesn't matter what Cody and Robin are doing. It was an odd segue for me. I'm guessing maybe the producers help with it. Because to me, I was like, you don't even talk to Mary. Why does it matter where Mary is? Unless they were talking about, like, they, they have to film or something. So they decide. The second half of the episode, for me, was like a classic Sister Wives episode. They met new people. They had interesting conversations. The conversation... I. I said this when I was talking about the preview for the episode, which is, I love Janelle and Christine, but I felt like they've had the same conversation in like four different locations, where Janelle says that she's separated, but she's open to reconciliation. Christine's like, are you sure? And Janelle's like, don't push me. And Christine's like, of course, whatever your timing is, it's perfect. That's sort of my interpretive dance Well, at least she doesn't again say that she's open to another polygamous relationship. Yes, oh, wait. She does say that. But I so what I said was I would like this conversation to move forward. And I think it did a little bit. We do finally start to see this. So they're going to drive to Idaho to spend some time with two of Christine's brothers. Um, Christine does not belong to a church anymore. Neither brother is polygamous. They kind of, I kind of felt like I had to really read between the lines to figure out what was going on with the brothers. I don't know if I just missed it and they were super clear. But, and then it was very confusing because it was... It was, I was confused as well. Also, I don't care. Yeah, John is easily confused. The one little single brain cell bopping around in there has a hard time disconnecting from guitar, 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 well, I guitar. Can't, I can't argue with the truth. And he sometimes sneaks a look at his phone during this time. All my secrets. I know, I'm going to out all of them. So what I near as I can tell, the older brother is her, is her uh, full brother. They share the same parents, 
it sounds like when her mom left, what she said was that her brother stayed with the dad and his and his other wives, which then implies to me that Christine left with her mom, which is interesting because, uh, and then the other brother is her half brother, who was raised as a full sibling because this was one of the second wives. It wasn't really clear to me whether it was a wife that he married after her mother left or before or what. Um, but it's interesting because I always thought, I don't know when Christine left. This might be for some of the super fans to tell me. When Christine's mom left, how old she was. Because I assume that she was raised in a full polygamous family through all the years. And what's interesting is now it seems like unless they spoke really oddly and understand it, that she did not live all 18 years in a polygamous household. That her mom left at some point and took her and, I don't know, the girls or something? I don't know. And so what's interesting is neither of the brothers who were raised all the way to 18 in a polygamous household did go to polygamy. And in fact, Christine's memory of it was that it was a ton of fun. There was always a party going on, all this great stuff. She loved it. She couldn't wait to have sister wives. The men, the, the, the men were more like, it was really tense every day. I remember the moms upstairs and the downstairs mom screaming at each other. Every day you were wondering who was going to. And so it does make me wonder if Christine had been there for 18 years under if her If she would have had a different feeling if about it. If she would have had a different feeling about it. Because what she said her memory of it was it was just all a party all the time. Yeah, so I'm wondering, I'm going to see if I can figure out how, in one of the episodes where they talk about her mom leaving, which I think in our rewatch is coming up, how old she was when her mom left. Because if she was old enough, if she was still young enough not to understand underlying tensions in the family, that may have a huge, this might be part of, you know, we give Robin a really hard time about how her views of polygamy are, even though she never lived in a two, in a like two household, like where two households were together, like, her, her dad would show up and then they would have this special experience and they get a hundred percent of him that whole time and then he would go away, which kind of sounds like what she did to the family. Exactly what Cody did okay. with her family. So they drive, which is going to come up again later. Okay, so they're driving up. They have a nice talk conversation. They talk about how Christine doesn't really belong in the church. And they talk a little bit about the church, about, she says to Janelle, kind of like, do, do you know if anyone's in the church? And she's like, well, I haven't gone with anybody to the church in a long, long time. And they talk a little bit about, um, th at this point, it's been nine months since Cody has been in the house, which by my math would mean September-ish. This is after, I assume this is after Isabel already left. That's what it kind of sounded like. So I'm guessing this is like September. Um, and they talk a little bit about... I'm trying to, they intersperse this with the most boring segment we ever saw in our life. So they talk about, well, they talk about when, when, basically when Robin freaked out about Christine needing to get a release from the church. And Jen, uh, Christine was kind of like, we haven't gone to the church for years and years and years. Why would I need a release from the church? And she's like, you know, do you think she freaked out because she felt like I was invalidating her marriage? I thought, well, she is legally married. And it's like, you know, I get it, Co but covenants are only as strong as your belief in them. I mean, there's plenty of people who, like, John and I are people who try not to say anything unless we're going to follow through on it. Like, it's really important to us. I know lots of people who are very happy to say, like, yeah, we're going to do this. And then later on be like, no, I'm not going to do that. And be I don't need to say, I don't need to justify it beyond I change my mind. And I'm a little bit like, well, then don't then say for the moment this is the plan or something like that. So covenants are only as strong as your belief in them. And so it's kind of like, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of with Christine on this a little bit in the sense of like, if she doesn't believe in it anymore, she doesn't believe in it anymore. Um, I don't know. I mean, she certainly gave it a good shot as much of a shot as anybody can with a marriage. And it's not like they don't have a system for her leaving. It's just a matter of if we're not part of the church, how do you even show up and be like, I'd like a release. And they're like, I'm sorry, who are you? I mean, they would know who they were for sure. But they would be, I, I, I've heard various things. I've heard theories that they're really start part of the AUB and I've heard theories that they're really, you know, they're definitely not. And I don't really know because I don't know if they have like their equivalent of a Pope like one person or one council who's like, 
where the final view of the AUB, or if it's more like a lot of non-denominational Christians, which are like, I can get kicked. I could be kicked out of one church and just go to a new one. No one could kick me out of being a Christian. I mean, Christ probably could, but <laughs> and maybe you know. Anyway. Um, so I don't really know how that how that's going. And this, uh, that's when Janelle says, I haven't really been with Cody for nine, ten months. And it's just wild. To haven't me. seen him, right? Stayed at his house. He hasn't lived with... They've seen each other a few okay. times because they right. went to their the birthday. And he hasn't seen her kid in, or talked to her kid in a month, right? The, the youngest kid? I don't know. I, I missed that if she said that, but I'm I believe pretty it. I'm sure. Um, so then they intersperse this with the most boring scene but uh, of Cody and his, his buddy, was it Brian who's the one he performed the marriage for. And he goes, oh, the best experience of my life. Just so amazing. And I'm like, because you've got to be the center of attention and no one knows what a jerk you are. And Cody is giddy. I mean, ecstatic through this whole segment about his friends that he loves. I'm like, I haven't seen him this happy. I don't even see him this happy with Robin. I mean, maybe, maybe in some of those paparazzi photos of them out and about. But, I mean, he is absolutely twitter pated with how excited he is to be around a guy and they do this I, this is so weird so i guess the guy brought the trailer i didn't know i assume if he has a, a car lot that he knows how to haul trailers but i did not look like a car trailer to me it looked like an equipment trailer like what you would put something much smaller like a four-wheeler in or but i don't know i'm not saying but they didn't measure the car they're going to load up this car it doesn't appear that they bothered to measure it before they drove. He drove this trailer all the way out to get it. Um, and what car is it? It's the same white convertible that he's had since the first season. It's the OG convertible. Which um, all of the kids have driven. Isabel was the last of the kids to drive. Um, I, you know what? My only snide thought is he had to sell it to a guy from Oklahoma. There was no place local he could sell it, and so that's one of those things where I go. I bet you he worked some deal where he's going to get the total short end of the stick. This is probably why all these people like him, is that he's not... He's always ready with some money for some harebrained idea. Um, and he's, so he's going to sell him three things. And he's very much like, I told Cody he doesn't need a project car. He's got all these kids and these houses to build and these... But, I mean, it's a camping car, right? Because he took it camping with Chanel. And you go on and on, and then Robin's like, this is where I got my answer about Cody in this car. Lots of fun things happen in this car. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I Thank you for putting that image in my head. I think there's a picture of them, like a pinup. Remember there's that painting of them where they're, or photograph where they're kissing on top of the car or something like a... No, I don't remember. Uh, I'll show it to you later. And I'm better off. That's all right. But they, they, So they put the car all the way in, and it's about two inches too long. And then they take it out, and it just was, to me, it was like, I can't believe all the segments that you decided to pick. You decided to have one where you fail. But he's got gloves on, and he's, because you often need gloves to, well, he was, like, hooking up a trailer. I mean, that, that man loves gloves. I've never seen, we work with cattle, when we worked with cattle and horses, we didn't wear gloves as much as Cody did. He's always like, ha a weed whacker, put my gloves on. And I'm not saying you shouldn't wear, use gloves with a weed whacker, but it's like, he must have nice. Just watch your windows if this one gets at it. Well, there wasn't a weed whacker. That, that was, was the, a riding mower. But I did it, I only did it once. Okay. And then someone else did it the second time. Um, and then I broke it another time, closing the doors wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so many windows. I'm a proudly riding away, then I drive over and I see John, and he's like, no, there's the window missing. <laughs> and my, my dad did the same thing, though. He took out the front window on the, on the apartment. Yep. Huge, enormous window. Like, probably 14 feet by 8. I mean, it was big. 16 feet by 8. I mean, it was an enormous window. And then they got the new one in and it didn't quite match. The other, <laughs> yeah. There's two enormous windows, and the tint on them was slightly different. Totally so they, different. So to get them to match was quite a thing. Um, yeah, and they all have great memories with the car. I just don't care. I just don't care about the car. Okay, so now Janelle and and Janelle's talking about how she feels separated. And unlike the other times that she's discussed it, she does not talk about reconciliation. She doesn't even seem open to it. And this is where I realize... I thought Janelle has been just incredibly mature 
about I don't mind seeing Cody and Robin together. I don't mind any of that. And now I'm starting to think that she really doesn't. And in fact, she likes seeing them together because then she doesn't have to feel guilty about how much happier she is without him. It's, like, it's kind of that, that religious angle of like, I can't be too happy because then I would have broken my covenant. But since he has abandoned me and has stopped being a husband, maybe I'm thrilled. Like maybe this is like when you want to break up with someone and then you trick them into breaking up with you instead. And then you're like, oh no, I'm so bummed that we broke up. Well, I gotta get going. You know, that kind of thing. She talks about how she likes being able to turn off the light when she wants to. She likes the dogs, the dogs get to sleep on the bed. She gets to read the book she wants to do. She, re re I really, when she talked about how happy she is to see Cody and Robin together, I really felt that in a way that was like, oh, Oh, that is a little different tone than I thought I had previously heard. So, um, so she they, tell, they do a whole background thing where, where Janelle talks about how when she first met, she knew Mary's family before she met Cody. And it's like, yeah, because she was married to the brother. I get that she doesn't, maybe the brother is asked not to be mentioned as much because they very seldom mention it. But I always think it's so weird that they don't just flat out say so, like they mention it so little it's almost weird it is weird it is weird i personally can't remember when they specifically said that she was married to mary's brother um so if you remember because i said that on tiktok and people were like they mention it all the time so if you remember if you know all the times that they mentioned mary's that she was married to mary's brother please let me know because I can't remember. It's, I know that I know it, and I've known it forever, but I can't ever remember how I know it. Like, was it from an episode, or was it from their book, or what? But she says that she went and she met Cody. I think they don't. I think they play this down a little bit because she would have been married to Mary's brother when she met Cody. And what she says is that he came into the room and her heart sang like, "Oh, I've known you my whole life," and um, and all of that. And I can't say that I have never felt that instant connection with someone. Um, but, uh... I love you too. Oh, thank you. Did I, wait, wait. Oh. How did you feel when you first met me? Oh, you were way out of my league. He says that. He, he likes to scare me by telling me that he was so intimidated by me that he wasn't going to follow up after our first date because he was sure I was out of his league. And his buddy at work was like, No, man! If you think she's hot, you got to go for it, buddy. And then I texted and said something like, I really enjoyed my time last night. Did I say something about I don't seeing know. you again? That's all I needed. Okay. But he makes my heart stop because I'm like, well, what if I had been too shy to do that? Would he have just blown me off? We never would have been together. Would you not have fought for me, John? Anyway. I was pretty quick on that, though, with the thank you so much for last night. I thought we had a chance at a second date. We did. We did. Look at us now. Look at us now. Um, so she said, and then and then Cody's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I flirted with Janelle or not. I mean, we talked a lot. Is that flirting? And then Janelle's like, yeah, he was always joking that I should join his family. I'm like, yeah, Cody, that's called flirting. When you jokingly ask people to join your polygamous family, that's called flirting. Don't act like, oh, I don't, I don't possibly know. I was just so charming and fun. And they get into that whole thing again. I Now, this is the thing. I believe them. And, and Janelle and Christine are both really honest about, I felt called to join this family. I felt, by the way, the, the use of the word, if you did not grow up in a sort of, I don't know if every religion has this, but I know in sort of the Christianese um, religions, specifically Protestant, that's what I'm, uh, that's, I'm a Protestant. Christian. Um, and I taught, I taught at a Christian college for nine years. So I heard, and I taught archery among, and computer science, but mostly archery. So I had a lot of time to talk to the students. Saying that they are called to date someone is a big, is a big thing. Red flag. It's, yeah, it's not usually, it didn't, I didn't know if I ever saw it work out in the nine years. It was more of like, I don't know. I, I don't even, I, I don't need to get into it. But it's a weird thing. I, the number of students that would come in and be like, yeah, someone in the someone came up to me today in the cafeteria and told me that they felt called to date me or to marry me or that they had a dream, a vision of me marrying them. And it was always like, 
it'd be like the cutest, prettiest, bubbliest girl, and some guy that she has never met totally creeps up on her. And I've heard, I, there were guys too, like big, strapping, like baseball players or athletes or something, or just good looking guys, and be like, yeah, some girl told me. And it was, it was never like the, it was always a little, it was always a little creepy. I'm just gonna say that. Now, I'm not saying if you had that in your life, I'm not saying, I'm just saying the times that I saw it, I had some concerns about where exactly this calling was coming from. And it didn't seem so much... The nether region. <laughs> yeah, it seemed more hormonal. It seemed more like the way that you crave a chocolate cake rather than, I don't know. So that was funny. So anyway, but I trust when Christine and Janelle say things like, I really felt called to join this family. I don't regret it. I... You, I believe them. When Cody says stuff like, oh, I was never attracted to them. We don't believe it. I don't believe it. I believe that is a way of retroactively hurting them. Of saying you were never desirable. You were never wanted. I, you were forced upon me. I just don't believe him for a second. And I think it's, and I think that whether Janelle or Christine are right or always moral, I think they're at least trying to be honest. Now, I think Cody is sometimes too honest for his own good, but he is happy to lie when he thinks it's a, it's, it will make him look better. So it's totally unbelievable. So they get to Idaho. Christine says she wants to take her to Idaho to drive ATVs, which is a little wild to me as a cover story. They should have just said, I wanted to go see my family. Because they, they get on RV, on, on we, ATVs. we wanted to be on TV. Or, yeah, something. And then they drive them. Um, they're fine. I mean, we've driven ATVs for I, years. I mean, honestly, that city looked appealing because they have ATV tracks in the city. Yeah, we were like, are they in a city? Because we've only ever used them. Um, where like, there's not a city. Where, and where roads. there's where like yeah, where like, a car can't fit. <laughs> yeah. And so you're like on little little trails you can't fit through, or you need to like John used them all the time like fixing fences, and we would take them out. Um, yeah. Anyway. So it was, that was a little bit like oh. Okay, they're just in town. So they do all that. They seem really nice. I thought they had a very interesting and respectful conversation. And I'm like, maybe they should just have Christine and Janelle do this. Because Christine, they both were polygamous. They have a great deal of respect for polygamy. Christine now doesn't want to be a polygamist. Janelle still does. She reiterates that she would join a family. I always think it's funny that when she says, I don't know how I could possibly join a family, because I'm like, literally your mother did. Literally your mom just met this family and joined them. But people have pointed out, like, maybe she means more of, because she's not an active member of the AUB, maybe she means because she's on TV, and a lot of polygamists don't like that. Maybe because specifically several of members of her family are LGBT. Like, maybe it's those other factors that are other than... Just her age, which is what I assumed she kept saying. I thought she was saying her age. Like, because of her age, she couldn't. And I was like, Lou, your mom was your age. Um, just so you don't, if you are, don't watch a ton. So Janelle's, when Janelle and Cody were getting serious or were going to get married or whatever, her mom wanted to go up and meet the family up in Wyoming to check that they weren't, this wasn't like a sketchy situation. So she went up there, met Wynn, who was Cody's dad, and joined Wynn's family. So technically, Janelle and Cody are also... Brother uh, and sister. Yeah. So, like those really racy erotica novels that they sell on this the, the, the stepbrother. That's kind of a genre. It's not one I read, but I'm not going to yuck your yum. It's not my business. Um, the stepbrother things. Never, ever, ever, ever have I thought that that would be a thing that I would Never to have I ever. Um, so, and they show, they show all these pictures of when Cody was, like, there was a picture of Cody with very, very young Janelle, Christine, and, and Mary. Gorgeous! I was like, oh my gosh, they're all blonde, they're all, to me, it looks like he, he ordered in and got three variations and was like, I'll keep all three. Because they're all beautiful and pretty. Um, I was like, oh my gosh, I wrote all, so pretty, all three of them. And then they talk about how they were all in this trailer together in the beginning with paper thin walls. And they mentioned the paper thin walls multiple times. So I'm guessing what they mean is you could hear the them having sex. You could hear the sex every single night and that was difficult. That's the only, because they just kept mentioning it over and over and over again. Yes, they did. So they talk about, uh, they talk, they talk about... I don't remember the brother's name. Was his name Mike? Oh, Levi and Steve. So Steve explains, 
the whole thing we talked about, about how all of his memories are, there was an upstairs wife and a downstairs wife, and they were they would scream at each other, maybe not every day, but there's always so much tension, and it was so incredibly difficult, and how he never had any interest in polygamy. He was very respectful about it. But I was going to say is that Janelle and Christine could just go around the country and talk to people who grew up in polygamy and either decided to or not to join polygamy and why. Um, or people who've left, and I think it would be a great show. So much better than hearing them having the editor show us Mary explaining the carriage house for the fifth time, or hearing from Cody again about how all his children are terrible. So, um, and then there was a, I was very confused with whether or not Levi ever considered it or not, because what he's, they didn't say it. What they said was they are not polygamous. They talked to his wife, I think her name was JC. Jackie, JC, anyway. And she said he didn't tell me until it was nine months. And they didn't clarify what he didn't tell her. Tell you what? That he didn't want to be a polygamist? That he did? did that like, he grew up polygamist? I don't know. And then she, they said it really freaked her out. And then he said, but she didn't know at the time that I didn't. And then they, they were all kind of talking at once. So I never really got whether or not he was open to polygamy before he met her. If he told her that his family was polygamous, but he didn't say that he didn't want to be, whether he was open to it, but she was... I don't know. Point is, though, they're not. So maybe That's you all can there is to explain it. it to us in the comments. Yeah, I'll go rewatch it, but what I felt like is I that they, they they used the word it to, to, to uh, often for me to understand whether what they are specifically referring to. But they are not polygamous, and he seems happy not to be. And then Janelle says something about polygamy, which I do agree with. She says that, you know, if they could create some sort of legal way for the women to be married in polygamy so that other women had... And I do agree. That's one of my big problems is that we look at exactly what happened, which is funny because we just watched something in the rewatch where Robin was like, we want to prove that we're not like the stereotypes of polygamists. And I'm like, oh, the stereotype that the man takes financial advantage of all the women and if they leave, they have nothing? Yeah, sure didn't prove that. Because Janelle's explaining how it's been really difficult to try to get a handle on her, to separate her assets. And we're like, yeah, because Cody put his name on everything. And because they're not legally married, she doesn't get to use things like common law marriages or any of that. Although I still argue that a really good lawyer could make an argument because of the way the money was mingled in the business, especially. Because there are other ways, there are other contracts that... Now, I don't think that she would get what she was fair to her because... She put in more money than probably a lot of people. But I think she could get more than nothing. I think there would be a really good justification between the TV show, the things that he's promised. It's almost like maybe we should just let adult people do what they want to do. Well, I mean, that there should at least be some kind of contract or something. But my argument, I mean, you'd be, you could, you could make an argument. You just, if you got in front of the right judge and the fact that they had an LLC and that money came in and that money came out and they said a lot of things on the TV show and reiterated it multiple times and not just on the TV show where you could say it's edited. They also had stuff on Twitter. They had interviews. They had all that. It does seem like there could be an argument for her to get something, something. I'm just saying, maybe not anything. And people argue, well, they're not married. Marriage is not the only, the only kind of legal contract. They were in a business together. And I don't think that she would get everything back that she deserved or even an even one-fifth. But I do think she could get some assets back, especially because they put all the money into an account. And if they were not, depending on how they did it, and she knows all the finances because she did the taxes every year, um, I bet you they could have something. And I've, and I've talked to a lawyer who watches the show who said that she has often thought about how she would argue it in court. She says that you could definitely be argued in court. Whether or not they win is something totally different, but that likely she could sue um, either for back child support, if nothing else, for assets from the business that he is that he is taking money out of without written permission from the other members, something like that. I'm just going to say, I know a lot of people disagree, but I think they could do something. But I do agree, like, the real issue is, I don't. I think adults should be able to do what they want, but then there's concerns about things like uh, welfare fraud or tax evasion or things like that. I don't know what the solution is to that, but it just does seem like it, the, the solution is not, well, let's just... Let's just make sure that the man gets all the assets. I don't know. So, I, I mean, I agree with her. I don't even know what that would look like. I'm not, I don't know enough about even 
the basics of tax to even have a beginning clue as to how that would do that, but... Um, Let's move on. Okay. You're bored. No, I have to go. Okay. You have to get going. Okay, got it. Okay. So, Christine is a little bit like, do you know what this means? Janelle is trying to get her money. And absolutely, I would be here for, I said it before, five hours of accounting and all that. Man, let's watch the trial. Because we yeah. would. Oh, my gosh. I mean, could you imagine if they had an actual trial where they went to court and the, and she proved everything, and then they, like, subpoenaed the, like, producers and the editors for unaired footage and this and that. Um, and then Cody cuts over to Cody saying, oh, I absolutely believe my wife deserves assets. That's why I've made sure they all have stuff in their names, and I just wanted to crawl through the TV and just... Because that is not what he has done. He promised them he would have them a house. He's like, that's why their names in the houses. And then when Christine did not have his name on the house... He asked for half of the money. And so you know for a fact that if his name had been in the house, he would have demanded with a lawyer the money. I mean, she wouldn't have had a choice. He would have taken half of the money, if not more. Um, or forced her somehow to say, like, oh. Well, I mean, it's fair. Half for him, half for Robin, right? Right? And so I'm just so... I'm so mad. So, but it does look like, so we get, that's the end of the episode. I could talk for 50 minutes, but John's eager to get going. You, you did. Well, I could talk for 50 more minutes just about how wrong Cody is and how this is an example of blatant lying. He is not, where are Janelle's assets? It's like, oh, well, we have Coyote Pass. Yeah, your name is on her piece. You haven't paid it off. Every time she asks about building on it, you pretend you have no money because you're doing these deals with this guy where you're selling cars. Sell the cars and give the money. Did you give the money to Janelle? Oh, no, because that's your car. Okay, well, then where are Janelle's assets? Where are Mary's assets? Because somehow that land all combined, I doubt, is worth as much as his one. Someone got mad at me and said, I can't call it a mansion anymore. The extremely large, expensive house that many people cannot afford. So I don't know what... The McMansion? The, the, I don't know what you want to call it, but I, I do not live in such a place where houses like that are a dime a dozen. Um, and so, uh, but it looks like next week in the sneak, sneak peek, the only thing that my eye caught was that we're finally getting to the scene with Coyote Hill, Coyote Pass, and, uh, and Robin crying. And I hope Mary gives her something to cry about. But well, I doubt it because interview Mary is still like Robin's the best. Okay, I'm so gonna go see you guys by the horse. Okay, love you all. See you soon. Bye.